think if I had a black and white shirt on, I'd say Wembley because I was nearly got a hat trick at Lords. I've got two wickets and two at Lords, so I think the Wembley one would be something that I'd be, uh, especially if it was in a black and white shirt, I'd definitely go for Wembley. It felt different. Um, I enjoyed it. The history of Yorkshire Cricket Club is is massive. It's huge. Um, you look at just the what's happened recently in you know, the dark times that have have, have descended on on Head and Leo. Obviously, obviously the, co the course of the Azim Rafiq stuff and the racism stuff. It's it it, it was headline news um, because not because of. You know, the, the, the magnitude of what racism is, because that's that's a, a, a huge topic in itself. But because of the, a, a, a club the size of Yorkshire was the one that was involved, I think just, just took it to a whole new level. It took it to a level even further because of the size of the cricket club, the history that comes with Yorkshire County Cricket Club, um, geographically, the, 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 the radius that it covers. Um, the story was the story was massive. It was always going to be big because the racism was was huge, but you know, I had to take it to another level because of the size of of Yorkshire County Cricket Club. I knew when I joined Yorkshire, even just for a short period of time, that I was joining a, a massive club, um, and I think that's what makes it even more um, distressing. What happened with with uh, in the last sort of two or three years with what's happened with cricket at Yorkshire. Um, it, it, it's it, it, it's massive for cricket because of something like if a if an organisation like Yorkshire were to were to go under because of of what's happened, then that would have a huge ramifications on cricket in general. So I knew what it was I was taking on when I went to Yorkshire. I enjoyed it because the lads were great fun. There were some really really good young players at the time. I was uh, it was there was me, I think Ryan Sidebottom. Andy McGrath, um, Gerard Brophy, the 30-somethings, and then a bunch of 18-year-old kids who were in the likes of Joe Root, Johnny Bairstow, Gary Balance. There was some uh, there was some exciting young talent in there. Um, and I, I, was fort I felt fortunate to play alongside these young lads and watch their careers blossom from there. I think we had a lot of luck. I think to win an Ashes, you've got to have you've got to have Lady Luck on your side. Um, if England don't to win this Ashes, wow, they've, you know they've they've done it the hard way because they were, were two 0 down, and but they've won four out of five tosses at the minute. You know they've had a lot of weather conditions go their way. We had the same in two thousand and five. We had umpire's decision go our way. Damian Martin was given that LBW three times, and he, he you know, he's, I don't think he could have hit the middle of the bat any any harder when it. Uh, inside edge onto the onto the middle of the bat when it comes to decision making that went in our favour the run out went in our favour uh, not many injuries that went in our favour you know McGrath getting injured so I think coupled with the fact that we had a very very good well balanced side and a fantastic bowling unit was one of the reasons or the biggest contributing reason to why we won the Ashes so it was a it was a brilliant summer it's a summer that I think we are we are possibly ready to eclipse because if England can win at Old Trafford, go to the Oval, then I think this this summer's been as good, if not better, than 2005. And it'd be brilliant if we can do like that. Like they did come out on the on the right side of it, which would be a would be a great achievement. Seeing as though there were two 0 down. Uh, Ricky Ponson was the hardest I played against. Um, I was fortunate to play against some of the greats of, of the game. Um, the likes of Lara and Tindulka and Travid, Callis, Smith. You know, I'm missing a whole a load out there. You know, Mohamed Youssef, I'm trying to think of other. Myla Jaiwana, uh, Kumar Sangakara. I had a bouncer that I could use to intimidate batsmen. I couldn't intimidate Ricky. I just couldn't. He was just in. He was just impossible to bowl to. Um, he really was. He had my short ball. He hit for six. If you just pitch it up that little bit, he hit it straight back past you. He was for me the hardest I ever ever faced. And 
um, when you when you you look back at what your strengths and what your weaknesses were as a cricketer, your strength was something was which was intimidation as a fast bowler, big tall, could bowl at ninety plus mile an hour, and he used that as his strength because he tried to hit you for he, every short ball. He tried to hit you for six, and then your margin for error, especially for this, you know, somebody not as not very not that tall. Ricky was about five foot seven, five foot eight. Um, your margin for error was so small. He was he for me. He was one of the best of all time. Um, like I said before, the others that you could get at, you could hide the ball, you could bowl bounces at, and they wouldn't take you on. Um, Ricky was the opposite. You couldn't hide it. There was nowhere to hide it for him. Um, you got in a contest and you had a chance, and you got a mag on that from, you know many times. But he always felt as though it was um, it, it was either six or out. You know, we were going to have a good, good, good crack at a, an entertaining contest here, and um, he was going to get a few runs, or he was going to give me a chance to get to get his wicket, which was always a, you know, a great battle. One of my first captains, David Boone, who was about five foot five, um, good big moustache, um, came off the back of. Scoring 100 after 100 after 100. Growing up watching the Ashes. When you grow up watching the Ashes in the 90s, you just it was just Boone scores another 100 for, for Australia against England. And Boone scored another 100 for Australia against England. So as a 17-year-old walking into the Durham dressing room, um, I couldn't, I just couldn't, I was so in awe of him. I couldn't speak to him. As this little fella that I played 100 times for Australia. And I, and I couldn't speak to him, but to be fair to him, when I said that to him afterwards, he he did say it was a good job. He says because it took six months to understand an absolute understand a word you said because he couldn't understand the Geordie accent. Um, he was just a just a great man, uh, and, and you know, I was I was fortunate to play with some some good characters at Durham. You know Simon Brown, who I played for, who played for England, uh, John Wood, but then you know growing up, I was. I was fortunate to to sort of have Darren, Darren Goff as my hero, and now he's one of my best mates. And sometimes you say, "Don't meet your hero," but mine is just my hero is it was everything you want him to be and more. And watching Goffy on on TV as a 14, 15, 16 year old take on Australia the way he did, and then to come into the England side and play alongside Goffy, um, that was a that was like a dream come true. So. Keep reminding him about that whenever you want anything off him. Uh, but he's a he was a brilliant character, an unbelievable man, great performer, and light up any room that he walked into. I think your, your leadership style differs on what team you've got and how you want to play your game. So Michael Vaughan was different to. Michael Vaughan was different to Andrew Strauss, shall we say. Michael Vaughan had an all-rounder. Strauss, he didn't have the all-rounder for that, for the entirety entirety of his of his leadership um, with England. So Vaughan got flint off at his best, but um, Strauss he got Swan at his best, and Swan he was a a different type of bowler to Ashley Giles. So I think as a, as a captain, you try and you uh, uh, for me, you're only as good as your bowling attack. Because that's what wins your games. Twenty wickets wins your games. Um, so I, I, I played. I think Vaughan was the best captain I played for because he was. He, I was probably playing at my best when he was in that in that leadership role that he had. He was very relaxed. I think Strauss was always going to be an England captain, but he his outlook of the game was was completely different. And that was for England. For me, the best captain ever played for was Dale Benkenstein at, at Durham. Um, he was he puts himself down a lot. He captained Natal for a lot of years, uh, and he to a, to a very very successful side. And and he captained Durham for a lot of years on a very very successful side. And he was somebody who who seen the game in a calm way, who understood the game inside out. He could he could work out what was coming next. In the in the game and what we needed to do to combat what the next role was, but he was also you know firm and fair, and that is something as a as a bowler. When you look at your captain, you don't want to see him panicking. You you want to you want to know that he's listening to what you're trying to do and obviously trying to to achieve, 
but he's also got it in his own mind in how he's trying to drive the game forward. And I think that is a, a great art in, in leadership. And so from a, a captain's point of view, you can't just, there's not one size fits all. I think it's about the group that you're trying to to, to, to mould into, into you. And um, Strauss did that a different way to Vaughan. Vaughan did that a different way that I had with Benkenstein. Um, but for the two that I probably played the best for, were domestically for, for Benkenstein and internationally was probably Vaughan. Well, it started in Brisbane and the way the story goes now, it's like it's in Sydney now. It, 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 so even, even you know, it's, it's amazing you get you get the same stuff at the, at the, um, at the start of every Ashes series. Um, I think Michael Atherton said at the start of this one, um, it was in Sydney. So that tells you how wide it's gone because it started off in Brisbane. Um, Ian Wood said it was at fourth slip. So it wasn't quite that bad, but it was, it was, it was bad enough. It was a lesson of preparation. If my preparation into that series wasn't the greatest, because I got injured just before the first Test match, um, a little bit like Jimmy at the minute, Jimmy Anderson at the minute. His um, his preparation was hampered, and we haven't seen the best of, of Jimmy Anderson. And I feel as though I can sympathise with that because I tried just tried too hard. Body was body was telling me to bowl as fast as he can, but the preparation wasn't there in. You know, the timings weren't there and I pulled out too early and my best mate gave me the ball. Had give me the honour to bowl the first ball of the Ashes and 20 seconds later I give him it back and just missed the middleman out. So it was just one of them things. You know, these things happen in life and you you get stronger from obviously in uh, from times when things aren't go, don't go so well and I definitely got stronger from the back of that. What do you say to yourself? Yeah, you, do you just walk off and cry and go into the, you know, want the crowd to open up? Um, I remember what I did say to myself at the end of that, at the end of that sort of over was there's a test of character here and you either sink or you swim. And the sinking part would have been to finish that day's play, limp through the end of the test match and never be seen again. But I made I made sure at the end of that over I walked out a fine leg and took a whole load of abuse, and made sure that right for whenever England pick you, because there's a good chance they're going to drop you in the next Test match. But you make sure that you don't sort of die in a hole. You make sure that you do not so sort of go missing, and make sure that you stay on this field and you 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 know you that that's the test of character you you show. And unfortunately, because of England didn't have a great squad going into that series. And unfortunately, the way the, the series went for England, I had to play every single test match. I played every single day. I never went off once. And I made sure that I was true to my word, that I was gonna, it was gonna be a test of character. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm not gonna, obviously, you know, run, run away from what has just happened. And um, for me, that was, that was probably one of the best things that happened to me after that because I made sure that I was, uh, I could easily have sort of wilted and never be seen again, but that was never gonna let that happen.